Welcome to the Poe Politikin Show. Founded in 2008, Poe Politikin is a hip-hop meets self-help brand. With each interview, we teach the babies and share success secrets with you, the listener. Past guests of the Poe Politikin Show include Yo Gotti, Currency, MC Light, BG, Dead Press, Rashida, Project Pat, and more. We also showcase the future upcoming stars of hip-hop. Subscribe on iTunes and get automatic updates of each podcast episode. Popolitikin.com. Welcome back to Popolitikin.com, your home for self help meets hip hop. Make sure you go on um, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Music, type in Popolitik and listen to my interviews past 11 years. 1212, one, two. I'm in the place to be with Golden Del Nari. How you doing, bro? Hey, man, I'm doing outstanding. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on this live cast, man. Thank okay. you. No doubt, man. Why they call you Golden Del Nari? Well, you know, Golden Del Nori actually is my author's name. You know, I'm the owner and front runner of uh, Authors of the Game LLC, which is our here in Antelope Valley bookstore, and it's a publishing company. Absolutely. So this is the reason why I named myself Golden Del Nori as a way to come up with a new identity and reinvent myself in the in the, in the, in the literature world. Right. Then speaking of new, new identity, um, I know about you through Young Rick, so I don't know. That's all I know. So just tell us about your background and everything. Okay, well, I come from the, you know, the Pippin background, 13 years active. And um, Young Rick is a, is a colleague of mine, someone that I truly respect and he's a mentor of mine. And it's a blessing to even know that man. But as far as me, I got my feet wet, man, in like the Arctic winter months of uh, 2005, around November. And uh, it actually caught me by surprise. You did what I'm saying? When I did jump into the lifestyle, it was through observation uh, from an older gentleman that I knew. And uh, just being blessed by the by the scenery and the understanding that was being imputed to me indirectly, I just took to it. And ever since then, I never looked back, man. So you still active? Yes, I am. Yeah, Absolutely. Because uh, I actually had uh, I interviewed Young Rick. I interviewed uh, Gorgeous Dre. I interviewed the original white folks. And then a lot of them, you know, they kind of still, you know, they, it's they're kind of like they say, like, you got to get in and get out, you know. So are you, that's why you're doing the author night? You trying to get a... Uh, way to get out of it or are you still going to just keep doing it absolutely so would you consider this for myself as a transition period from the old way of thinking to the new way of thinking and this is where I coined being game organized and legal which is taking elements of the game and transitioning into a legal understanding because you and I both know that the lifestyle is an illegal lifestyle and if you don't use it for what it's intended for which is a stepping stone eventually you'll start stepping wrong but before you cut off your nose, you know, you can't just bite your face at the same time. Oh. So as I'm dibbling and dabbling into this authorship, into entrepreneurship, once I feel that this is something concrete that will override what I'm currently doing, then by all means, I'm going to pass the baton, man. And then I feel like everybody is uh, getting pimped or, or pimped somehow, but what is a pimp to you? Like, how did you define the pimp? Well, I would define the pimp first and foremost as a man, a visionary, someone that sees something greater in someone and within himself that he sees to be beneficial all the way across the board. I feel like uh, being a pimp is a, a pre-introduction to entrepreneurship, and I feel that he's mm-hmm. also a person that has a, the ability to be his own boss and set his own standards at any given time. That's what I feel the pimp is. And then it's, I know it's like... Uh it's like different types of women, you know, you got a woman, then you got a hoe, then you got a slut. Do you look at it like, you know, different types of women too, or? Well, I think there's a, a huge difference between the bitch and the woman. Mm-hmm. Because see, most times when you talk about pimping and hoeing, people always say, well, how can you do this to a woman? And I always tell them, I haven't met a woman. The only women that I know are the women that are in my family. Oh. But what I run across is the personality of a bitch. And when I run across that, that's just a beautiful, intelligent, trustworthy, caring hoe. You did what I'm saying if you break down the acronym. So it's a state of mind, and those state of mind is what I attract, even though both genders are female. You did what I'm saying? And then I know it's kind of like a, uh, I guess I would say it's like a stereotype or a bias. They think a lot of times, like, the men be forcing the women to do the shit. And I, I don't think, I know a lot of women, they don't, you know, a lot of women do that shit without pimp. So it's like, to me, the pimp gonna help them. The pimp is protecting them if anything goes down. Big that. Well, you know, that's one of the most common misconceptions in the game. See, a pimp is nothing but a hoes man, and a hoe is nothing but a pimp's lady. It's, it's, it's a perfect match for each other because their mind states are in unison with one another. So, no, we're not forcing 
a bitch to do anything. It's a willing participant that's actually trying to be involved into a lifestyle. Now, true enough, there's a small percentile where people are using outside vices like drugs and things of that nature to force people or subdue them into the lifestyle. And those are the people that we don't recognize or acknowledge. Everybody that deals with us is willing. And then I know, willing. like, I used to, I watched a lot of the, uh, Maroy's videos, the cross country pimping and stuff. Yeah, man, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, big homie. But I know one of the things I always saw the peace talk on is like, uh, like underage kids. So I know that's like one thing they really don't agree with. Yeah, that's what we don't do, man. That's what we don't do. But I'm saying, how do y'all even know sometimes? Because he's like, shit, you know, women, the girls are looking older now and they lying about their age. So what you got to make sure you check they, when you get their drive? How you really know how old well, they are? Is- this is my personal opinion. Let's look at it externally. As a as an evolving young male that becomes a man, to me, you should be able to identify the characteristics of a child. Mm. And if you can't see that physically, you should be able to detect that mentally. Because a child has childlike behavior. A woman has woman-like behavior. So to me, I don't find it passive where it's excuses to say that a person can identify that. Now, if you feel that cautious or that mindful about the person you're dealing with, off the rip, I wouldn't even fuck with it. You get what I'm saying? If you have to second guess yourself, but always do the necessary checks if you have to, by all means. But I feel like when you get caught in a situation when you're dealing with a child, there's no excuse. Period. We don't even condone that, man. We really frown on that in the culture, man. And then uh, we always ask qu- this question. So what do you love most about the game and what do you hate the most about the game? You know, what I love most about the game is the camaraderie, you know, and I'm not talking about the camaraderie within the fellowship amongst other teams, even though that's a blessing. I'm talking about when you get that irrefutable loyalty between you and your game. And when I say your game, I'm talking about the bitch that you're fucking with. That's one thing I like. And I think that when you understand the woman in her first before the duty of her, that's when you'll get the best run about the bitch. So that's what I enjoy about the game because everything else is is, is, is a cherry on top. You feel what I'm saying? All the money, everything else comes when you moving properly. Now, the things that I hate about the game <clears throat> is today's game. See, there's a lot of people that play the part, but they don't have the heart, if you dig what I'm saying. And what I see is just a lot of uh, fuckery, a lot of circus clowns. And I feel that if you don't have the power of discernment within yourself to identify what's authentic, or if, in other words, what's bespoke and what's not, then you'll run across a bunch of jokes. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, and actually, um, it's funny you was talking about how the game is now because uh, I don't know if you know Rosebud and Shantae, they got a video, uh, a thing they're doing on YouTube just talking about a game. You know, they're some older pimps. Oh, yeah, man, they're veterans. I see uh, uh, Rosebud, man, salute to him with the uh, Drop a Dime DVD series. Yeah. I've been seeing Shantae on YouTube, man. Salute to them, man. Yeah. You know, giving out some game. Yeah, I dig what you're saying. So I would say, do they still do this? Like, you know, I always hear them back in the day talking about, like, you know, you got to get served and everything. Do they still do stuff like that now, or they're not following the, goal, the game like that? Like, serving you and I- doing all that? I think that when you're when you're true to the game, the principles of the foundation are always be implemented. So yes, but I think that when you're a person of new generation understanding and and you miss pimping and you out here moving impulsively, then you will take comers and goers and you will break rules. And those usually be the ones that identify as fools. You get what I'm saying? But traditionally, yes, I'm a server, Pete. We gonna sit down, have a drink, and talk about what we think, and we gonna keep it pimping, man. Yeah, absolutely. And I, said, I, I guess I, I kind of just want to get more into your, the the psychology, like your thinking, like far, you know, mm-hmm. you have these women, but then like you love them, but then at the same time, they can kind of leave anytime you, they want to. So how does that, you know, how, how do you work through that? <laughs> it's got to, you know. Okay, so, you know, the way a P's love runs for the, for the hoe is not the same way that it does for a square. You get what I'm saying? See, my golden rule is this. It's what you do that keeps me around you, and it's what you say that turns me away. So really, I'm listening to the actions of the bitch. I'm not giving a fuck about what she's talking about, because that's my job, to impute this game into her. You get what I'm saying? So, by, 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 by principle, you know what I'm saying? It's about actions. You know what I'm saying? A whole action is a pimp satisfaction, man. Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So then I, I want to hear you because you, I hear you say you're a game coach. So what, what exactly do you do? Okay, so when I say that, that's just a, a metaphor for me saying that through literature, through my books, I have Acts of P that's out right now. I have Misconceptions of the Game that's out right now. I got the 304 Bible that's coming out. So what I'm saying is through literature, 
I'm, 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 I'm coaching game in a, in a game organized and legal way. You get what I'm saying? Because see, most people think that when you talk pimp, you're always talking about on the bench. No, you're using all type of internal challenge, and as long as you're benefiting from that where it's maximized, then you pimp it, man. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just articulating it in a different way, in a safe way, in a mature way that's beneficial to everybody. You feel me? And I'm still getting paid by it. Yeah, it's funny you say that because even like the number one thing I look at with with pimping and it's like the better pimp you are, that's the better hoe you gonna get. Like so, you constantly got to be better, better in yourself and being. I mean, that's just a life in general. Like even if you ain't no right. pimp, just the, the better man you are, the better your game is, the better girl you gonna pay the pool. Right, because you gotta think about it like this. You know, they say in the game that that the bitch is a reflection of us, right? Mm -hmm. So. How can she be a reflection of us at the best of her ability, ability, excuse me, if we're not at the best of our ability? All she can do is reflect what we're giving her. So if I don't know shit, the bitch ain't gonna know shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just, a, it's just it's a rule of thumb, like you said, that's applied across life. The game of life, not just the game of pimping and hoeing. You dig what I'm saying? So the more, like Young Rick said in, in a cross-country pimping DVD, man, I'll never forget. He's had that. He says, you know what? You gotta get smarter. You gotta get smarter, and if you get smarter, the bitch gonna go harder, man. Simple mm. as that. And then uh, you say you've been doing it for like thirteen years. Yeah, thirteen years active, man. So how do your uh, your parents feel? Uh, they feel no type of way. You know, they actually been knowing about me doing this even when my curiosity was in the air beforehand. You know, and if anybody, my mother at first she couldn't believe it because you know you gotta think about it. She's like, did I give birth to a pimp? <laughs> and, you know, no mother thinks that, you know what I'm saying, when they're pushing you out the world, man. But, you know, one thing about it is, you know, a mother's love is unconditional. And even though they may not agree with everything you do, you still a child. So, you know, she never she never condoned it, let's be honest with that. But she's never rejected the idea of me doing something because I have to live with those consequences. She know how she raised me and the path that I chose is on me. You get what I'm saying? So I, w I, I remember uh, Rosebud was talking about his first his first hole and his first turnout. So I want you to talk, let us know your first, where were you at when that actually happened. Your first hole, your first turnout. How old were you? Where were you at? Okay. Um, well, this was in two thousand five, man. Uh, the first turnout I had, I met with Champagne. Uh, I met around the, the Van Nuys area, which is uh, supposed there's a blade out there, man. You know, just happened to run across her actually with my partner but you know I wasn't pimping at the time and um, when the bitch approached me you know he detected me he was like P man that's a whole wow 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 and you know I'm so square you know what I'm saying I'm not knowing what's going on man and uh, once I got a number man he sat down with me man and, and told me some things and uh, I got around the bitch man and just really took the confidence within myself man and laid it out to her and she gave me that run and I never looked back man she gave me a seven year run man until she got killed you know what I'm saying in a car accident so but uh yeah, man. And what yeah. made you want to do it? I mean, it was just the curiosity of the lifestyle because I've been around it. Like, my uncle was some pimping, you know what I'm saying? I had three or four partners that was on some pimping. So, the, the, the game, I guess you can say it was in me. I just didn't realize it. And it took one of my partners to actually say, you know what, man? I'm about to hi highlight some, some traits that you have. And I'm going to see what you do with it because what you don't realize is that a, a real hoe just came up on you, man. She put herself in your hands, but you can't see it because you're not opening your third eye. So, you know what I mean? He helped me look beyond the surface, man. I found my purpose. You know what I'm saying? So, they, they still following, like, the game where, like, if they, they choose up, they got to have a choosing fee and all that? Absolutely. Now, you got to keep in mind, you know, a diehard hoe, man, that has understanding of the lifestyle, if she wants to choose some respectable pimping, she's going to come with a respectable fee. There's no question in that. But then you have the new generation. Uh, I don't even call these cash peas, but, you know, you got the uh, uh, the sheets and, and wolves clothing that come out here and try to play the part, but they have no understanding. You know what I'm saying? Half of these niggas is gangbangers and doing other kind of strange-ass shit. And they want to say that they pimping and they taking all kind of bitches. You get what I'm saying? No fee. They fucking on the bitches and kissing them in the mouth and all kind of other fuckery. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you supposed to be kissing them in the mouth? Hey, man, I don't do none of that, man. <laughs> At all. You know what I'm saying? A bitch ain't gonna come up off a date mouth smelling like Mexican hips and kissing me in the mouth. Yeah, that's out. <laughs> So you, I want you to talk about, so what are your current projects? You named some of your books earlier. Yeah, dig that, man. So, you know, I got the one that's out right now. Anybody can find it on Amazon.com. I got Acts of Peace, which is by myself. That's my first solo. And then I got Misconceptions of the Game, Volume 1. It's with me and Biggs the Boss out of Phoenix, Arizona. And then I have another one called the 304 Bible that's actually dropping next month. 
Um, I got another one called uh, How to Please a Dying Piece, using skills to give her body chills. Now, when people hear that, they think like, oh, you talking about making love to a bitch? No, I'm telling the person that the real G-spot in any woman is in her mind. Because mm-hmm. if you control the mind, you control the body. So you have to take the same energy and the same game that you run and try to fuck on this bitch and run it into her mind and you'll get her every time. Um, I got another one called... Uh, Square Business Volume 1, which is uh, understanding male and female interactions. What that one is right there is just basically, you can say, uh, amateur understanding of, uh, of a psychological under, uh, a psychological ways between the male and female dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Understanding verbal and nonverbal communication. You know, basic things you need to understand about a bitch before you even fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where are your books at? Or Amazon? You know, Amazon.com, man. All you got to do is type in Golden Delanoi. That's G-O-L-D-E-N. And then Della, D-E-L-L-A. And then Nori, N-O-R-I. Then where you see yourself five years from now? I see myself out the game, man. Because, you know, one thing that uh, I seen Sugar Free, you know what I'm saying, say on Vlad TV, he said that um, when he transitioned himself out of the game and wraps his mind stay more so about being a family man is that when the laws change he had to change himself and i agree with that because you know nowadays you know the peas have always been the prize in the situation when it comes to the law because they always feel like we're the predators or we're the ones destroying lives so things have transitioned from pimping and pandering now to human trafficking but you know how that sounds yeah. and you know how much time they giving cats for that so what i'm saying is you can use a lifestyle as a stepping stone and get ahead. But make sure you use it for that. See, when you become stagnant in the lifestyle and you stay stuck, that's when you have more of an opportunity to become an inmate. But only and that's something that, you know, that's something that I'm not going to do. I you say know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think I give myself five years max. After that, man, I should be a full-blown entrepreneur, a full-blown author to the highest extent. But what I what I don't understand either is like okay you can look on all them damn old ass country movies and shit mm-hmm. and they had they had brothels they still got brothels but then That's when sure black people, when black people do it when black men do it then it, it's human trafficking <laughs> but they got right, brothels right. even Asians got them a- Asians doing that shit Mexicans doing that shit they got mm-hmm. they got houses where you just go in there it's, it's 50, 30 women. You just pick. Right. They hold the numbers up. <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I always felt that, you know, no matter how far we get as black people in the world, we're always going to be the target uh, by the by the by the greater power, which is the United States government. And it's kind of crazy that the same government wants to say that pimps are human traffickers when the United States government human traffics our race. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's undue punishment that this government has to adhere to. But would they find themselves guilty? Of course not. It's always let's point the finger at somebody else. So with that being said, we have to get in and get out and, 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 and live our lives to the best of our ability, man. You know what I'm saying? Some people are really in a lifestyle for a real purpose. And some people are just in a lifestyle for the glitz and glamour. The choice is yours. So what's your purpose? My purpose is to get in, get out, become the entrepreneur that I'm actually am right now, and to become an author, and just to open up even more legitimate businesses. Just like I just started my 501c3 for a nonprofit called Freedom for Felons, where I can help fight prison reform. You know, one of my mentors lately that I really respect, you know, Gorgeous Dre, man, coming from the game and becoming a uh, human rights activist. You know, I'm so proud of that man. Yeah. And I think that that's motivation. And rest in peace to his brother, you feel what I'm saying, that was killed by the Seattle Police Department, but I'm just so proud of that man to see him transition, and I feel that if he can do it, he's actually setting a standard for other P's that have internal talent that they don't know, so what my calling is in this life, I'm not too sure, but I know that I'm on the right path right now in my transition stage, you feel what I'm saying? I just remember when I first, uh, when I first heard him on American Pimp, Shit, I ain't know nothing about Pippin, but I was like, man, if he a pimp, I want to be like him because shit, I knew he knew right. what he was talking about back then. So that right. was like twenty, right. that was almost thirty years ago. So hey, right, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and I say, you know, you know, I never had the pleasure to meet the gorgeous day myself personally, but he's no novice in the game, meaning that he's no beginner. He's a he's a master in the craft. Oh yeah, but you know, it, it, it takes somebody of greater understanding and, and, and greater uh, uh, vision. 
to, to denounce the old them to create the new them in a positive light that can be beneficial not only to himself as a pimp but to our people and I really find that admirable about him. The same thing with Young Rick, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's been a, a, a gentleman of the game, and now he done prospered into other endeavors, you know, messing with legal tender and creating his businesses. So these are people that I look up to, people that came from nothing, that turned it into something, that turned that something into something great. So I would say, what is, I'll ask you this a little bit later, but what is your, so what's one of your favorite books and your uh, favorite movie? Okay, so my favorite book, Mm. My favorite book. Okay, my favorite book that changed my life. I really, really, really speak on this, and I've always spoke on this. So I actually read this in prison, unfortunately. It's called The Art of Human Chess by Pimp and Ken. And uh, in that book, what, what, what captivated me so much was how he talked about when he was in prison, he utilized that time wisely to come up with a greater game plan. And when he got out, he decided to, you know what I'm saying, go down to Atlanta, you know, he started uh, buying out the bar and how Jermaine Dupree came in there and heard them shouting his name over the intercom, but how he was taxing the local ballers to get to the VIP, running his money up. And then he branched off into entrepreneurship with his books, you know, after establishing himself and how he really ventured away from the game and the aspects of pimping and hoeing many, many moons ago. But he utilized himself and, and, and pimped himself and put himself on a greater plateau by using other vices and talents to make himself known and put himself out there. So that book right there kind of catapulted the motivation for authors of the game. You know what I mean? That was like the blueprint, like, oh, okay, this is how he did it. Okay, well, this is how I can do it. So that book right there. Now, when it comes to favorite movie, um... Hmm, that's a good question. A favorite movie. I really don't have one. I have so many, but I don't have one in particular. I say that. What's some of you like? Okay, so I like Top Gun <laughs> with Tom Cruise. Um, I like Cross Country Pimping. Every, every, every edition on that one. Yeah, I think I like um, all of them too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I like stand-up comedy a lot. So anything that Mike Epps does... I'm a fan of it. You know what I'm saying? I think that guy is extremely talented. Um, and as far as favorite things that I like these days, there's a comedian on, uh, uh, on Instagram or YouTube. His name is Shooter King. I think that dude is hilarious, man. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I'm on these days. Yeah, then I was going to say something like, how you was talking about jail that's the only thing i kind of like i just be wondering like why does it always take like people like i always hear people say like oh when they went to jail they started doing this why does it always take people to go to jail to like learn stuff so i be feeling like maybe we don't meditate enough or just sit you know be still and just before you know because it always takes us to, like we go to jail okay. then it's like okay then you got you learn it but it's like why it took you that to do that Okay, well, I'm going to speak on myself, and if it applies across the board, then it does. For me, uh, before I went to prison, I was so busy multitasking and dealing with the things at hand that I couldn't think outside of what was uh, the possibility of anything else besides what was on my plate. Now, unfortunately, when I had to sit down, now I don't have to worry about A, B, C, and D. Now I have the time to really clear, clear my hard drive mentally and really build a new program and that's exactly what I did. Unfortunately sometimes you have to you have to sit down in order to get your mind right. That's just the truth, you know, of the matter. That's what happens with most people now. What you do at that time and how you reinvent yourself is the benefit of being sat down. Now if you go in there and you don't obtain any kind of knowledge and you get out and repeat the same thing to bring yourself right back, then you wasted your time. You did what I'm saying? The point is when you do get punished, you're supposed to improve yourself. Bottom line. Yeah. What's up? I would say. You know what I mean? You got you. Yeah, because I always have to be wondering sometimes. Cause I say, I think, I, but I ain't never heard nobody like, you know, as far as like black people, I never heard nobody tell me like, hey man, you should go meditate. You should go write down how you feel and write down your goals. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't hear no shit like that. <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. That's true. I mean, you know, like, you know, again, I feel like if, if you're free and you, and you haven't went to jail, I think you can. Get yourself together mentally and make a new game plan. If you can, if you can, uh, if you can make time and make that happen, it just depends on your own personal schedule and what you have going on. That's what I think. But as I said, when you get sat down in prison, now it's time to perfect your body. It's time to perfect your mind. It's time to find yourself. It's time to see where you went wrong. It's time to reinvent, rebuild, and reconstruct your game plan. You get what I'm saying? So 
you know, that's what you call using your time wisely. Because even in the darkest hours, you still have resources in prison. You got the law library. You know what I mean? You have other people's testimonies. And you can account for whatever you went wrong or whatever you did and make it happen. You know, so when you come out, you're on fire, man. Now, if I didn't go to prison, I would have never ran across the Art of Human Chess by Pimpy Ken. I would have never learned about penmanship. I would have never thought about starting a business. None of these things would have came to pass. So I think that if your destiny is already written, these things were in place for a purpose. Mm. So I'm really thankful that I went for the short amount of time that I did go. And I got out because it made me better. Now, if I didn't go, then I probably would have got a longer sentence. I probably would have caught myself into a more dangerous uh, outcome. You never know. I probably would have got killed. Who knows? So I'm thankful that I went personally. I'm thankful. And then what would you do? I don't be. I don't want to like. I don't know. I don't want to like advertise, advertise it. But what would you say? Somebody listening to this interview right now, and they're like, "Man, I want to get into some pimping." <laughs> what would you tell them? I mean, what I would tell them personally, man, is go get you a job. That's uh, what I would tell them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Go, go get you. Go get yourself enrolled in college. You know, apply for that fast work. Go find your alternative trade where you can establish yourself legally and build your empire. Because see, the thing about the lifestyle in which on YouTube starting next month on Wednesday at six o'clock, every Wednesday I'm gonna start camming up. I got Golden Illinois TV, it's me, Johnny Cash, out of Memphis 10, and Slim Sir, uh, uh, who lives in uh, Florida by way of Brooklyn. And we're actually gonna start talking about the game and organized legal ways of uh, bettering yourself within the lifestyle. So what I'm saying is this, the reason why I'm telling people if they wanna join the game to go find you a square job and do that is because most people of the lifestyle when they get intrigued by it they only look at it from a one dimensional standpoint they look at the cars the hoes and fast money but they're not looking at the consequence they're not realizing that this is an illegal lifestyle and most people get caught up in the glitch and glamour and they're not built for that prison system that's that prison system you get what i'm saying they're not built for that so i'm not going to encourage anyone to join this lifestyle for them to fuck around and get caught up in some shit and they actually got to sit their ass down and then they roll over on the game and they become confidential informants and things of that nature. There's so many ways in the world where you can make money. You don't have to come this route and take it from somebody that's living a life. I'm telling you to find another way. And if you can't find another way and you want to come into this lifestyle, you better be cooked on both sides like a hamburger patty. And what I mean by that is that you better be ready for the, the bad just as much as the good because if you're not, then you misunderstood. Mm. That's how I feel. All right, bro. I want to say thanks for coming through politics with me. Hey, man, no problem, man. Thank you. Yeah, you want to tell him anything else? Uh, other than that, man, all I want to say is continue to support pro politics, man. I want you guys to tune into this. I think it's a great platform to help not only myself, but everybody in the culture, any uh, lane of life. And just find your inner peace and become productive, man, and be the best individual that you can be. Yeah, man, I would say it's going to be cool. Like, I want to interview you uh, a couple couple years from now, man. Like you said, you be completely out of the game. That'll be cool. Take that. Yeah. that. That is the goal. Absolutely. You can interview me anytime you want to, man. Anytime. Hey, man, this is A-Bomb, the P. Inglewood's voice of choice, also known as Golden Delanoid, True Story, man, on Co-Politicking. I just want to say, man, this is a great live casting platform. And if you ain't heard about it, you heard about it now. Dig that. Yes. The Poe Politikin Show is brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, Audible is great for any continuous learner wanting to grow and expand their knowledge and insight. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and get an audiobook of your choice free with a 30-day trial. After the trial, your paid membership will begin at $14.95 per month. With your membership, you will receive one credit every month, good for an audiobook on Audible. Cancel before your trial ends and you will not be charged. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and download a free book by Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Les Brown, Damon John, and more. Always remember that knowledge is power.